are you spending a lot of time in upgrading and managing the products like VMware Cloud Director, Usage Meter, Chargeback and RabbitMQ and looking for ways to minimize those efforts in terms of patching and performing those day-to-day -day activities? Well, I have an answer for you. In this session, I'm going to discuss about VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager which is going to solve this problem for you and help you automate all those tasks. Hello everyone, my name is Bhaskar Gupta. I'm working as a technical product manager for a cloud service business unit. And today I'm going to talk about VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager 1.5 and what are the new features which have been introduced with this version. So just a quick recap of what VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager does. It helps in the deployment day zero, configuration day one, and day two operations like certificate and node management. Version 1.4 was released in October 22 with some of the features like day two operations, troubleshooting options, enhanced import options when you can import the brownfield environment and concurrent task execution. So what are the new features which are included with Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager 1.5 at a high level are task restart options for failed tasks, rollback and resume options for failed and cancelled upgrade tasks, auto registration for usage meter during deployment, updated handling of product versions, interop reporting and notifications. We'll be discussing about those in the upcoming demo when I'll explain all those features there. Like any other appliance installation where you can use an OVA tool for deployment or you can manually deploy it by downloading the required binaries and creating the NFA share. When the product update on installation, we have an in-place upgrade from 1.3 and 1.4 to 1.5. We'll go through those newly added features through a demo now. This is how we log into VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager. So the first feature which has been added is restart a failed task. So for instance, you have initiated a task, whether it's a deployment upgrade or discover feature and in between it got failed. And the reason could be anything. It could be a network issue or an input parameter which you have provided but was not configured. For example, NFS share was not configured for VMware Cloud Director or the DNS entries were not there. So you don't need to start the task all over again. Instead, you can just click on restart here. For example, I've clicked on task 50, which failed and it was a deployed task, you can just click on restart option and it will restart those tasks. The next feature which has been introduced is resume or rollback of failed upgrade task. For example, if you have started an upgrade process for any product and here you can select a manual rollback. By default, this rollback option automatically takes a backup of the database. It takes a snapshot and if it fails, it will roll back to the previous version. With this version, it will give you an option to select a manual rollback as well, rather than the automatic, which comes by default. For this demo, I have got VMware Cloud Director 10.4.1. I'll be upgrading to 10.4.2. Click on upgrade. So upon clicking upgrade, I'll provide the version to upgrade to 10.4.2. And here is what I have to select, disabled rollback. By default, it is deselected. So by default, it is disabled. So I'll be enabling the option and click on validate. Once I get a success, so we'll start the upgrade process. So I'll be upgrading VMware Cloud Director from 10.4.1 to 10.4.2 using this feature. Once I click OK, what you see here is a couple of checkpoints. So I've got checkpoint one, checkpoint two, and checkpoint three as well. So this checkpoint are nothing but those snapshots wherein you can just roll back. If at all, if you encounter any issues, you can roll back. These are the activities performed by the checkpoints. So these checkpoints are marked in purple as you can see on the top and the subsequent tasks as mentioned here. So these are some of the tasks which are common across the checkpoints. And you can just select roll back from here or you can resume from the specific checkpoint. You can select any checkpoint and you can roll back that checkpoint or if you just select roll back it will just roll back from the first checkpoint basically it will redo the operation again so we have got two checkpoints which are created you can select any one of them during this upgrade process or you can resume from there itself if you see i have cancelled any one that's why you're able to see this option so i've selected one checkpoint i have resumed from that checkpoint so there is another branch which is created parallel to this 
with a new checkpoint because I have selected that checkpoint to resume from rather than starting from the beginning itself and thus saving time. So here the task is going on and as you can see these are some of the tasks and it created a new option for the checkpoint 4 and these are the subtasks like reboot, update validation, post cleanup, discover. Option to resume from a checkpoint it will only happen if it fails. For a completed or successful upgrade you won't get an option. So this task is still going on and we have got a checkpoint 5 as well what you see and then the subsequent task. So this task will not be executed on the top but instead the one which are marked in yellow will be executed. Now let's refresh. So it's still going on. So what we see is that checkpoint 5 execution have been completed and we can roll back from checkpoint 5 as well if it fails and these are some of the tasks. So after checkpoint 5 the task which are left is reboot, upgrade validation, post cleanup and discover. Now I have cancelled it again to see if we can revert from checkpoint 5. So we'll be selecting checkpoint 5 and try to revert from there. We'll select that. So these are the three checkpoints which have been created. I'll select checkpoint 5 and resume from there. So if you see another branch has been created, it will basically put from the snapshot or checkpoint 5 and resume the rest of the task. So what you understand from here is that whenever there is any failed task happens next to that checkpoint, so you don't need to roll back or restart the whole operation. You can just resume from the checkpoint like the snapshot operations itself. And at the end, it won't take up all your disk space. It will clean up the snapshot at the backup as well. So now everything has been completed and it's upgraded to 10.4.2. The next operation is usage meter auto registration. This is the new feature which has been included with 1.5. So what happened here is for example I'm deploying a new usage meter. Here you can auto register usage meter with VMware Commerce Portal. So I'm just selecting all the components here. I've just selected a JSON and this will save me from providing all the details. I'll select auto register. This is where you have to provide the CSP token, metering mode, connectivity, contract number, site name and using these details while deploying VMware usage meter it will auto register. You can also provide the proxy details through which you want to connect the usage meter to. Now you can view the alternate product version against the products which are deployed for the ease of management and deployment. You can see the alternate versions here. For usage meter, we have a cloud director and RabbitNQ as well. So this has been introduced to simplify the management and deployment and to avoid any confusions which come across. Not only that, we have also simplified the repository structure where you have been copying the binaries for the deployment and upgrade. Earlier, there was a specific folder structure where you had to copy all the binaries. That folder structure was created by CPLCM with 1.4 onwards against product but now you can copy the binaries anywhere inside CPLCM repository. We have introduced this to simplify the deployment and upgrade procedure so that you don't need to remember which folder it has to be copied and manage the folder structure. The next feature is generating an interop report. You can define a current or target version to check the interoperability. Also list the related products, possible upgrades, upcoming expiring passwords or certificates. All these details we can see from here as well. So let's see how it works. So we'll just click on produce interrupt bundle and here I'm not providing any target version. Let's see. It will be downloaded as a JSON format. You can see the environment name, the product type, the current version and which are the available versions to upgrade to. The password status, the certificate status as well, the vCenter, NSXT, interoperability status. If you are to provide a specific version to check against, so this is what it will look like. So we have provided 10.4.2 uh, as a target version to check whether it's compatible or not. It will give us the details whether it is compatible or interop status is okay or not. And so as the upgrade compatibility. So next we have the notifications. Now you can get the notification from this bell icon here. So you can see the task which has been completed or failed or you can also see the expiring certificates and passwords. This will be notified here. Optionally, you can also configure this to be sent to your email using the API call. The API call is available in the latest Postman collection. This is the API call using which you can configure the threshold for the notification as well as the SMTP details to send the notification to. We have also introduced some of the additional GUI features with 1.5 version. So the first one is manage nodes. Here when you click on manage nodes you can redeploy a node. For example in VCD you cannot redeploy a database node that's why it's graded out but the rest of the cells and the nodes you can redeploy and next we have this option here update environment data for example if you have updated the root password or a database password 
So all you need to do is update it here so that the CPLCM knows that the password is updated and it will connect to the environment accordingly to perform any further actions over there. So you can see these are the options which you can update the root password and you click on update. And we have got the task which have been associated with the product. For example, here, let me start a task, discover. Now we have got the task ID as 58. Now, once we go back to the environment here, we can see the task ID is mentioned. So you don't need to look for the task which is running. You can just click on that task and it will be showing up over there. So these are some of the features which have been included with 1.5 version. I'm sure you like those features and you will start incorporating this tool in your environment for faster deployment and day to operations as well. Do let us know and we'll appreciate your feedback. And if you have any queries, feel free to reach out to our Slack channel here. And thank you for watching this video.